The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading for this Sunday is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 32 to 40. I would invite you to pause this video and to read this reading from your own Bible or by following the link you'll find in the description of this video. I remember as a kid being sent to school for my first day of kindergarten with a little bag with an old bath towel with my name on it for nap time and a small box of raisins and a packet of crackers for snack. We had just moved to the east end of Hamilton Mountain and I knew nobody in the whole school. At such an ad, un, young age, I would not have been able to put my feelings into words. But I know that I was worried about just how I would fit in to this new place with new rules filled with new people. We all want to belong. We all wish for a place where we know that we fit. It is this deep longing for certainty and safety in our community that quells the disquiet in our being, that makes us, that disquiet that had made us question and worry about our place, especially during times of major change and upheaval. Our gospel reading today begins by Jesus reminding his followers of God's generosity to us as we face that desiring. Jesus says in the first verse that we read, verse 32, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God's desire for us all is to have our place in God's divine community. In the days of Jesus, the disciples and all God's children were wrestling with where they fit in. The certainty of their place had long gone as God's children were living under Roman rule, and that was constantly pushing and pulling apart their old sense of community and leaving them uncertain of their place, and often leaving them at odds with the Roman culture and ways of doing things. God's children in Jesus' day had lost their place, and Jesus came to restore them into a renewed community, God's kingdom. I realize that our world is always changing and that change always presents a challenge to our sense of belonging. And just as you and I have had to find our place in school and in many other places in our life as we've lived and moved and grown, we all are always adjusting and changing as our situation changes. But through all those changes, we need something to hold on to, to anchor us to be that place, person, or ideal or value that reminds us that we belong. Prior to Jesus, God's children had used God's promise of their, the story of their people and the history of a promised land that had been fulfilled. They believed in the building of the temple in ancient Jerusalem. It was an earthly kingdom with a physical place, and it was a powerful anchor that had served the community for generations as a center of belonging, but which had become corrupted and broken over time and through the shift of earthly powers. When Jesus says in the first verse of today's reading, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, he is saying with this teaching, he's reminding them that God's kingdom is not an earthly kingdom but a divinely created community that is unbreakable by the changes of earthly power or earthly structures. Jesus is reminding his followers that amid the changes and the turmoil of this earthly life, that the safety, certainty, and assuredness that we need, that our belonging to God and in God, is ours because it is what God desires for us. You and I, our families, our family of faith, our whole human race is in a great period of upheaval. Disease, famine, war, and destruction threaten our whole world. 
the monstrosity of greed, and the constant quest for earthly power has us, has led our earthly communities into conflict with each other and with our planet. We need an anchor more than ever that we can trust as the world around us becomes less certain and feels less safe. In Jesus' day, God's children needed to change. And the way, uh, the way they understood themselves and their community needed to change. And so God sent Christ to help remind them of the qualities and values that they would need to get them through their transition from brokenness back to wholeness again. So today, our entire human race needs to change, to grow, to evolve, to survive. Our current way of living together on this planet is no longer working. Now that first verse from our reading, our, those first words from that first verse are important words of reassurance and promise. Jesus' words remind us that we will always have a place with God. Our reading continued after that first verse with Jesus helping his followers to respond appropriately to God's generous gift and to ready our hearts for the restoration of right relationship between us and God and between us and each other. Jesus, in our passage, encourages his followers to see past the earthly quest for more and more earthly possessions, and instead to share our resources so that all people can have enough. Jesus also makes clear that the time to start to live this out is now, today. Sell all your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. Later, he says, be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. And finally, you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Belonging in God's community is God's desire for us all. Even in our times of uncertainty and upheaval, it always remains in reach for us to anchor us, to depend upon, to guide us through and past our worry and anxiousness. We are God's creatures, and God's kingdom is our community of belonging. I'd now like to invite us to join together in prayer as we pray for the church, our world, our community, those in need, and those who have departed. Let us pray. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. We pray for the church. We pray for Todd, Bishop of Huron, and our Metropolitan, Linda, our Primate, Sydney, Interim National Indigenous Bishop, and Martinez, Bishop of Amazonia. In our diocese, we pray for the parishes of Kent Deanery. Let your loving kindness be upon your church. Fill all who proclaim the gospel with your spirit. Equip your flock to speak your word of promise and hope in the midst of fear and uncertainty. God of grace, hear our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your creation. Dwell among us and sustain our earthly home. In places of famine, provide nourishment. In places of plenty, fashion us to be good stewards of your bounty. We pray for those affected by the wildfires in British Columbia and in California. We pray to have mercy on the lands that have been damaged by the fires and that are in the paths of the fires. Protect those who have had to evacuate their homes and strengthen those who will need to rebuild their communities and lives. God of grace, hear our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon the world. Be our helper and our shield in places torn by strife and violence. Raise us courageous leaders and govern with compassion and justice. God of grace, hear our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your children. 
Look upon all who wait for your steadfast love. Console those who grieve and embrace those who cry out to you. Help us to trust your promise and not be afraid. This week in our prayers, we pray for Doug and Georgia, Elizabeth and Jack, Bertha, Rose, Norma, Charlotte, Royanne, Jennifer, Karen, Doreen, Aubrey, Erlina, Jim, Chris, Claude and Carol, Stephanie, Marie, Vicki, Jason, Mary Rose, and Carol. God of grace, hear our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon our parish and community. Fashion our hearts to strive for the way of peace. Straight, strengthen the outreach ministries of our parish and all who care for those in need. We pray for our blessing of the Backpacks Ministry event. Help us to support our surrounding community, especially young children and families, with the collection of backpacks and back-to-school supplies. God of grace, hear our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember all who have died in faith and now rest in you. As they place their hope in you, so strengthen us to trust in your promise of new life. We give thanks today for the life and witness of Charles Gordon Platt, and we pray for the repose of his soul. We pray for Lois Foster and all Gordon's extended family during their time of grief. God of grace, hear our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your divine community. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love, joy, and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now to conclude our time together, I will give you God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.